Welcome back to DXB Today. And it is one month away from COP28, highly anticipated right here in the UAE. And we are focused on all things sustainability. So let's find out what's coming up on the show. Yes, Khalid is checking out the sustainable food workshop at Tab Chili. Khalid's all over the place. He's also going to be checking out somewhere else. He's going to be adding to his wardrobe by going to a vintage clothing shop right here in Dubai. Plus, we are chatting to award-winning e-waste recycling facility in Viruserve. Not only that, we have got ourselves some sustainable foods that we're going to be trying out and some uh, reformer Pilates as well. Guys, the environment, we care about it. COP28, how excited are we for it? I mean, so, so many people are going to be in town. I felt like there was already people here. COP28 is really going to bring the people through, people from all over the world. You know, Dubai is definitely the place for it. I'm not going to lie. I don't know a lot about it. So I'm looking forward to actually educating myself on the matter, finding out what is going on in Dubai when it comes to sustainability mm. and taking care of the environment. So for me, it's an educational opportunity. I'm still recycling which means that I've got a massive pile of boxes right next to my door, which I keep telling myself I'm going to take to the recycling bin, mm. and I never do. I'm not throwing it away. Yeah. I'll take it at some point, yeah. but that point just hasn't come yet. I'm sure, I'm sure you will. You know what I love about this is I, I think what they're trying to do this year as well with COP28 is, is make this an educational experience more accessible for the younger generations as well. You know, I feel like when we were growing up, maybe we weren't as aware, we weren't as educated on it. And now Dubai are making sure, you know, schools are visiting COP28 and making sure they are knowing everything that is going on. Uh, but it is a very good thing that we have experts joining this sofa to tell us all we need to know. So let's find out who our guest co-host is today. Hello, my name is Tatiana Antonella Beya and I'm the Founder and Managing Director at Gumbuk. I look forward to meet you all back in the studio. Yes, Tatiana will be joining us right here in the hot seat in a few minutes. But before we get into all of that, Khalid went down to a sustainable food workshop hosted by Tab Chili, a place that blends fermentation and heritage. So let's find out more. I'm inside Dubai's first fermentation store where you can come and get fermentation classes and even get the products and tools. I'm here today with Maher, who is the founder of Tap Chili, and he's going to tell us everything spicy. Well, Maher, it's a pleasure to be here in your store, and uh, tell us your story. Uh, thank you, Khaled. Uh, great to have you here, guys. So my name is Maher Tapshi. I'm the founder of Tap Chili. Nice ring to it. So I opened this concept, and it's all about fermentation. What is fermentation? It's actually putting stuff with jars and salt and making them very gut healthy. Now, apart from chili, what other items do you ferment? So uh, I ferment kimchi, I ferment sauerkraut, but most importantly, I want people to come over here and to take fermentation back home with them. And I do that through the power of my fermentation workshops. So you come here, you ferment for two or three hours. We don't have to make kimchi, sauerkraut, kombucha, anything you want to ferment, we can do it here, teach you the tricks tips, the science behind it, and most importantly, how to make it confidently to take it back home to your friends and family and enjoy it. And there's also a big environmental movement. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Correct. So one more angle of Tap Chili, and thank you for asking this question, is about sustainability. So fermentation, as you know today, uh, fermentation is about taking food and preserving it. But one thing we have in our region here is uh, we have lots of food wastage. And with fermentation, we can learn how to avoid having food scraps thrown. We can use those food scraps and actually ferment them something very nice. So elevating waste to taste is how I like to say it. If you're a chef, from trash to cash. So eventually, you can do so much with the food instead of disposing it. There's so much beautiful umami flavors or different kind of things that you can do. Well, I can't wait to roll up my sleeves and get fermenting. I had a fabulous time here today where I got a lesson in fermentation and as well, I got to taste fabulous fermentation food. So come on down and try it yourself.
Well, there you go. Pickle absolutely everything. Shout out to Tab Chili for that. Now, today's guest co-host dedicated her career to raising awareness on sustainability and green living right here in the UAE. One of the city's top environmental influencers, an eco-pioneer of sustainable initiatives like Dubai Can and many more. Please welcome to the show the founder and MD of Goombook, Tatiana Antonelli. Tatiana, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. So tell me more about Goombook, founded in 2009, yes. I believe. Tell me why you decided to start it. So back in 2009, we were not talking about sustainability. We were talking about going green, um, environmentally friendly products. And I think the narrative in the Arab world, in the UAE, was uh, very different. We were uh, listening about, you know, reducing the way we were hitting homes or talking about polar bears. Mm. So population here was not really interested in, in this movement and this trend coming from the US or Europe. So this is where I felt there was a possibility, an opportunity to actually come in with a new narrative, talking about the desert, how precious it is, full of life, different from what we usually know back home maybe, but uh, the need to do something here. The, whatever we, we consume, we use, we do have an impact. The, the energy consumption, the water consumption, and somehow we were disconnected back then. Mm -hmm. And Goombook is uh, here to educate, to create awareness about challenges that we may face, but also looking at solutions. We don't want people to be depressed, uh, seeing the doom and gloom of climate change, uh, which unfortunately is causing a lot of uh, eco-anxiety around the world. So from our side, it's about, hey, this is the problem, but you can do something. You can do something at home. You can do something at work. Um, it has a different level of impact, but uh, it's time to start and take action. Tatiana, now you've been with Goombook for, for, since 2009 and pr promoting sustainability. And I know that the UAE was very different back then. Dubai was very different back then. Would you ever imagine that COP28, the most important environmental event, would be happening right here in Dubai? No. <laughs> no, this is something incredible. But to be honest, uh, I had so many aha moments in Dubai and the UAE. Uh, many times you don't expect things, but this is the beauty, right? They do happen, and uh, um, we are always taken by the, the power of decision-making in, in this country, of seeing where there's a need, where there's an emergency, and, and stepping in to actually change things. Mm. So Tatiana, I know obviously you've got Goombook and I know another one of your projects is Unisoap and I believe that you've brought some of the soap for us. Can you yes. explain a little bit about Unisoap and of what it is that you do? So Unisoap was launched uh, in March at the Arabian Travel Market. Um, in the hospitality sector, one item that is actually wasted a lot is soap. Uh, all the beautiful five-star hotels we have in the country provide soap in, uh, in the bathroom, sometimes two or three. And some of the tourists might use it for a couple of days, but then they leave it back mm -hmm. and uh, they end up in landfill. And we're talking about millions of soaps. So the idea came to what, are we, what can we do with this soap? And actually we team up teamed up with an NGO in France, Unisoap France. Uh, they've been working for the past four years into cleaning and uh, hygienizing these soaps, breaking them down and producing new soaps for humanitarian causes. So this soap that uh, you're seeing now is actually a new soap, uh, just uh, fresh from production here in Dubai. Uh, we've teamed up now with already a few hotels, including the Atlantis. So this is a soap that uh, is made of maybe another couple of soaps and it's going to be distributed to uh, charities and humanitarian causes. On one hand, to help these people have access to hygiene, soap is something we give for granted in our daily life, but so many people around the world don't have soap. Of course. And also to raise awareness about hygiene. Uh, again, something that we, we have access to. Here we're very blessed, but again, many people don't have it. So this soap is going to go for a good cause rather than going to a landfill and, and creating more waste. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, Tatiana, I mentioned a bit earlier, you know, on an education level, I feel like when we were growing up, it wasn't really that prominent in speaking about the environment and sustainability. Now, however, there are so many initiatives, especially here in the UAE. Now, you've worked very closely with the Ministry of Education. Tell me more about the Greening Communities Initiative. Yes. 
we're very excited. And I think another incredible aspect of the UAE is the um, power they're trying to give to the youth. Um, the ministry has announced this year a new curriculum that is being embedded through the ministry to all schools, no matter what curriculum. And it's about educating on different topics such as circular economy, climate change, sustainability and the sustainable development goals for the youth to have, again, more information to take better decisions, but also to understand that sustainability is not a nice to have. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, maybe I'm going to be a solar engineer, so I'm going to choose a career in sustainability. No, you can be sustainable if you're a dentist, if you are working in as an engineer, or if you're a music producer. Mm -hmm. The way you're going to work act um, and run your business can be sustainable. It's about a culture. So tackling this from, from a very young age is very important. When we were young, it was about recycling paper. Mm -hmm. Now it's much, much more than this. Yeah, well, I feel like we're gonna be really cracking into it a lot, a yeah, lot more. Yeah, definitely. I know that you're working in some kind of construction material made out of uh, sustainable materials or used materials. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, this is very exciting. We launched a year and a half ago a campaign called Save the Butts. Um, and it's about collecting cigarette butts on the beach. Why? Because uh, as an, a way to engage uh, the population, individuals, it's fun to take them to the beach, let's clean. But in the past years, I could see how a, a normal beach cleanup was a bit depressing. People would go home and say, okay, I've cleaned the beach, but then what? The next day, the waste is there again. So our idea was to how can we show that the waste can be seen as a resource? How can we change the mindset of people? Then let's collect these this cigarette butts. But again, raising awareness about the fact that cigarette butts are plastic. Not many people know, not even the smokers. Two, these cigarette butts have a huge impact on the wildlife. For example, one cig cigarette butt can pollute 5,000 liters of water with more than 7,000 chemicals. And again, we, we're not aware of, of this. But again, let's not f you know, focus only on doom and gloom. Let's take the cigarette butts and all the other types of litter that we have on the beach or around us, and let's transform it into a circular economy material, such as this um, piece of, 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 of material. So this is actually made of cigarette butts, as well as other unrecyclables. So let's think about, for example, all the uh, food packaging. All of us, we order food on a daily basis mostly. And that packaging is unrecyclable. It has oils and, and food, so it ends up in the, in the trash. Again, this technology, this startup, which is about to open uh, the factory in Dubai next month, is able to gather all this waste and produce something that is very useful. Amazing. Well, look, I feel like we're in good hands to educate ourselves here <laughs> today. Tatiana, thank you so much. Uh, but after the break, we talk to the managing partner of an award winning e-waste management company solving problems of tomorrow. Plus, we've got healthy food and a nice little workout to end the night. You don't want to miss it.